What if those casual everyday pics of drinking alcohol were actually flashing warning signs? It's time for a reality check. Meet David, he's picking that bottle at every life scene. Work, home, parties, and he thinks it's all good. But what if it's not? In this video, I'm gonna break down the five different signs that are saying it's time to hit pause on your drinking. Now they're ordered in terms of seriousness, so make sure you listen to all of them. Imagine you're at a corporate event. The room is full of business owner, venture capitalists, industry leaders. Everyone is buzzing about the new project, the new merger, the next groundbreaking project. You're in that circle and people are talking about the new big trends in your industry. And there's a guy standing just a few feet away from that circle. He's fidgeting with his tie, then his watch, then back to his tie. His eyes are scanning the room for a familiar face, but he doesn't find one. He takes a big deep breath, preparing to join your group, but he stops and he turns around and he starts walking directly to the bar. One sip, two sips, and ah. You can almost see the weight lifting off his shoulders. He's finally comfortable, or at least more comfortable than before. With his newfound courage, the guy walks back over to the group of people and smoothly joins the group. Everybody's laughing and nodding, and finally, this guy feels part of this elite circle. And it all feels amazing, until he realizes that he needs to drink to feel part of any circle. This is what I call social calibration. It's that moment when you realize that you need alcohol to fit in, to calibrate yourself to the social frequency that you're in. But what happens when that calibration goes off? What happens when you start needing that external source of alcohol to feel internally balanced. For this guy, it's not about needing a drink to socialize. Deep down, it's about a fear that without alcohol, he might lose a part of who he is or who he thinks he needs to be to be a part of a circle. Let me tell you, your identity and self-worth should never be tied to alcohol. So if you're using alcohol as a crutch to get through different situations, this is a big sign that it's time to take a pause on your drinking. Picture this, a car on the racetrack. It's smooth, it's sleek, it's powerful, and it's ready to roar. Every part that has been designed for optimal performance. Now here's you as the race car. It's Monday morning and you've just started your week. Your engine's roaring, you're ready to tackle this week's project. You're ready to put out those fires, those emergencies that demand your full attention. But wait, there's a problem. Your car isn't running at full speed. It's as if somebody's poured petrol in the diesel tank. The car struggles, it's coughing, it's spluttering, and it can barely make it around the first lap. Tuesday comes the same story. Wednesday, you've guessed it, the same. And on Thursday, the car starts to find its groove again, speeding up, overtaking competitors. That Thursday offers a glimmer of hope, that burst of energy. You're feeling better, you're feeling more like yourself. You start to catch up on your work, start to clear a bit of that pile up on your desk, and even think of new strategies to move the business forward. The car is back in action, just in time for the weekend. Friday evening rolls round, and you find yourself at the bar. A drink tonight, a few drinks tomorrow, and before you know it, Sunday's here. Monday looms large, and you find yourself back in that sluggish car yet again. And the cycle just repeats. You're barely out of the slump from the previous week and you're setting yourself up for another one. Meet the productivity slump. The week work starts, you're still reeling from the weekend. By the time you find your footing, it's almost time to clock off for the weekend. And so the cycle continues over and over again. It's like you're constantly playing catch up, but you just never get ahead. For you, it might not be about losing those few hours of productivity or falling behind on tasks. Rather, it's a fear about not meeting your long-term goals and potentially even more terrifying, not living up to your full potential. If you always feel as if you're lagging behind, can you actually ever lead with direction and hope? If you find yourself in that productivity slump and you want to upgrade your car to that fast, highly optimized car for every day of the week, 
it's time to take a pause on your drinking. Now imagine you're on a boat, you're sailing through the calm waters, the sun is coming down, it's a beautiful day, and you've got your fishing rod in hand and everything feels at ease. Here you are unwinding, soaking up, living your best life, and the fish starts to bite, and you start to reel it in effortlessly. It's a small fish, it's not too demanding, and so you toss it back into the water. You decide you're after a bit more excitement. You want to get a big fish, something noteworthy. You put the bait on the end of the hook and you cast your fishing rod yet again, hoping that you're going to get that big, exciting fish. As you cast your line deeper, the waters become unpredictable. Instead of catching a big fish, you find yourself grappling with a shark. Pulling you off balance, you think it's going to topple the boat? And then you realize it's not so much fun. It's starting to get a little bit too dangerous now. But you just can't let go of the rod. There's something that's making it stick to your hands. You fight and fight, but the shark just won't let go. And then you realize you have two options. You let go of the rod or you just hold on and have the risk of going into the dangerous waters. Welcome to the world of moderation and struggle. You started off just wanting a small catch just for fun, but soon without realizing you end up wrestling with a force you just can't control. Sound familiar? You start off thinking you'll just have one drink to wind down, and before you realize it, you're way past moderation. The one turns into one too many, and it's just not a funny phase to be in. It's quite dangerous. This isn't just about knowing when to stop, this is about risking your balance, tipping over, and potentially losing control of your life. And this can happen with you when you reach for that one drink. That thought and that worry as to whether this one drink is gonna be the one that pulls you under. The struggle for moderation can often feel like an unwinnable battle. And if this is a battle for you, it's time to quit. Let's journey back to that thrilling moment we all know and love. It's Friday evening and we've just Finish the work week. You're feeling the weight of the work week lifting from your shoulders. You're locking the office and the big, booming, bright city is waiting for you. Work's over and it's time to let loose. Maybe grab a meal, hang out with some friends and enjoy your well-deserved freedom. Your phone starts to light up with invitations from your friends and you're tempted, you're so tempted. But just before you say yes, you hesitate. And then almost as if it's a mantra that you say to yourself, I need a drink to really relax and switch off. And that's the fourth sign. The moment when you catch yourself saying, I need a drink too. And I need a drink becomes a prerequisite for anything in your life. Take a moment, reflect, and take a step back from alcohol. There's a big difference between alcohol enhancing a situation and feeling as if you need alcohol for different situations. So if you ever find yourself saying that, it's definitely time to take a break from alcohol. The weekend, a time for family, friends, barbecues, parties, a time where our social media feeds are full with happy faces, the clinking of glasses, the exotic locations. There you are with your phone in your hand, scrolling your social media feeds. Everybody seems to be having an amazing time. There are rooftop terraces, barbecues, boat parties. And what's the common denominator of all of these photos? You've guessed it, alcohol. And as you scroll, there's something gnawing at you. A little voice in your head chiming in saying, look at what you're missing out on. You need to be a part of this. You feel the tug of FOMO setting in and you start to think maybe you should be part of that party. Maybe you should be part of that scene. You don't want to be missing out after all. It looks like everyone is out there with a drink in their hands, living their life to the fullest. And there we have it, the fifth sign, FOMO or the fear of missing out, amplified by the presence of alcohol in social situations. You see, FOMO isn't just about missing out on a certain event. It's about the emotional weight we attach to these social situations. It's the idea that we're having less fun, we're less social, we're less connected. If we're not partaking in the drinking culture, 
that so often dominates these social activities. And here's the kicker. If you feel like you're missing out on life's best moments just because you're not drinking, that's a serious red flag. Because no Instagram post or social gathering should dictate your self-worth or control your choices around alcohol consumption. So if you're finding that FOMO is driving you to drink more, it's definitely time to quit drinking. If you've experienced any of these signs, social calibration, productivity slump, moderation struggles, I need a drink or FOMO, it's time to quit drinking. And if you're interested in how you can do it, check out the next video where I break down the three key steps to quitting alcohol for good. If you've tried to quit drinking before and you're really serious about doing it properly this time and you wanna have a conversation, my calendar link is in the description below and where you can set up a call and we can have a conversation about what quitting alcohol would look like for you and how I could help you on that process. If you're not quite ready to work with a professional one-on-one, -on -one, subscribe to the channel and binge watch all of my content. Until next video, take care of yourself. Ciao, ciao.